So the easiest way to identify a maple tree is in the summer when it has its leaves out and you can you really want to have a sugar maple and not a red not a red or a silver maple. There's many types of maples, but the sugar maple is the one who gives you the most sap um, and takes the least amount of boiling to get the sap or to get the syrup from the sap. Um, ordinarily, um, you would say that the the bark of a maple is dark and tight, but when it gets old and gnarly like this old maple here, it doesn't look very tight at all, but it is dark. But you can come over on this side and you can see um, a shoot coming off from it that is not the same bark at all as much younger because it's a younger shoot. So come on over here and I'll show you what the terminal buds look like and how you can determine by its branching whether it's a maple. Okay, first I want to talk about branching. And so there's only five types of trees that have opposite branching. And this is, maples are one of them. So there's boxers and dogwoods and maples and ashes and buckeyes have opposite branching. So now we can see that this tree is one of those trees for sure, because it has opposite branching. You see how those little twigs are opposite one another? Now this one has been broken off, so sometimes that happens, but that's just because of wind or animals brushing against it. But it is, see how opposite that is. So this is definitely a potential for being a maple. So now we're gonna look at the terminal buds, and the terminal buds are where the leaves are hanging out until spring when they start to unfurl. All right, so here's a really good example of the terminal buds, which is the next way that we identify the maples. Um, you can also see the opposite branching of those little twigs. Um, see that? And then, but the terminal buds are where the leaves are hanging out until spring when they begin to burgeon and then unfurl into their beautiful maple leaves. But the terminal buds of a maple look, I think, very similar to a, oh, a deer hoof. Um, the difference between this terminal bud, this is a sugar maple. The sugar maple have brown pointy terminal buds and the red maples have red bulbous uh, kind of circular uh, terminal buds. So we know that this tree here is a maple. And you can see how tight the bark is. It's not all that dark, but this is totally a sugar maple. But the next point in sugaring is it has to be um, larger than 10 inches around in diameter. And so that is definitely, if I were to cut through that, that would be probably five inches in diameter. So you're not gonna want to tap this little tree here, but it is a sugar maple. So now I'm gonna show you one that I am gonna tap. And I'm gonna take you for a walk down my new hiking habit, which I've been working on and raking. Um, Okay, so this is the one we're going to be doing, and you can tell it does not have tight bark at all. This is a really old sugar maple, but it does yield good sap, and it's a good one to tap, which I do every year. So come on over, and I'll show you how to do this. Okay, so you're going to need a food grade bucket or some type of a um, container to capture the sap. Um, the time of day and time of year is really important because you want to have it really freezing at night and above 40 during the day, which is perfect right now because it gets super cold at night. And right now it's probably 50 degrees, I would say, so during the day. I would, um, so make sure you're checking for that mid-February all the way up to early April is a good time for sugaring maple trees. All right, so here's my food grade bucket. And what I did is I put a hole in the top of the lid just to keep the debris out from leaves falling or just twigs or whatever and dirt. The next caveat is what side of the tree do you tap? And so you always want to tap on the south facing side of the tree. And this is the south and that is the north 
for me and coming up here is where the sun comes up in the east and it's setting right now in the west. So I'm going to choose this side of the tree to make my drill bit or drill holes and um, you want to do it about four or five feet off the ground. I'm not sure why that is but um, so you don't want to have it down too low but I have these wonderful um, tubes that can extend a little bit of a distance so I'm going to make two holes on the side of the tree about you know chest length and then I want to make sure this is long enough that it will fit into the top of my bucket like so actually I don't think it'll go very high and I could probably put some rocks underneath it to make it higher if we want so I'm going to do that now and I'll get right back with you make sure your drill bit is going to be the same size as your spile so that the spile will fit into the hole that you create when you create the hole you want it to be going down at an angle so that the sap can just flow right out as compared to going straight in so those are the only caveats with that and you want to go in about mm, an inch and a half or so in this case I'm going to go completely this is probably an inch and a half completely up to this um, metal and what I did is I Jason put a piece of tape on there for me so I would know that I'd have to push into the tape in order to get it to the right depth but you don't want to go too deep or too shallow so all right let me get started All right, you're going to also need to bring along a hammer when you're done the drilling. You want to make sure that your holes that you've just made are, are free of sawdust. Um, and then you take your spile and, and hammer it in. Whoops. There we go. Get it in nice and tight and deep as you can go. And you can see my bucket down below here. I've already got it kind of balanced with some rocks around it so it doesn't get knocked over um, and is more stable. And then I put the tubing in there like that. And there's other ways to tap maples, which I'll show you in another video when I do the maples in my backyard. But I recommend finding your hiking habit and identifying the trees even in winter that are along where you're walking and if you've got a sugar maple on your hiking habit you can check it every day to see how much sap there is so every day Max and I'll come out here and we will gather on our way back the sap and take it home and keep it in the refrigerator until you have enough that you can boil down to make syrup I hope this was helpful let me know in the comments below what trees you're tapping this year and after maples come birch and there's different trees that come throughout the spring that you're going to want to tap.